Hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today I am here for a breakdown on the Sun Eater, Tamaki Amajiki. Definitely a fan favorite, and people have definitely been requesting for him, so I'm glad I'm finally getting to him. Tamaki, I would say, is a close range uh, machine. He's best at being close, he has good red moves, he has really great damage in his combos, he has good pressure, and he's not very good at being far away, so obviously he's the yeah, close. Anyways, getting into his buttons, his regular attack string is this four hitting attack string that can be dash cancelled after any hit, except the third. See, after there, I wasn't able to dash cancel. I'm mashing it, but I, I'm not getting it. So you can dash cancel after any point, except the third, and you're probably not going to want to dash cancel after the last because it's just a launch away splat thing. But you usually use the third hit to extend into combos because it can be cancelled into other buttons. So his air attack string is this three hitting attack string that leads into a bounce. And this one you can dash cancel after any hit, and the last hit can be cancelled, so the bounce is good for extending combos. His red attack is this <laughs> really dramatic, um, long ranged and pretty fast red attack. Oh, it's very long ranged. Further than I even thought. Maybe about here? Yeah, wow. And the second part will hit them if the first one whiffs as well. So it's this really great long-ranged uh, red attack that can be comboed after. Which, if you didn't think it was great enough just being so long-ranged and so quick, you can get his combos after it. Um, obviously can't be done in the air. His, his yellow attacks or his tilt attacks, his counter attacks, his armor attacks, whatever you call it. This move, his tilt attack, is a four-hitting... Crab stab <laughs> that can be cancelled into other buttons afterwards. So you can use it, and you can also combo into it. So it's going to be one of your main tools for getting combos and extending them. And same applies for the one in the air, because it's basically the exact same. So you can cancel into it, you can combo into it, and combo out of it, both for free, which is pretty amazing, so it's one of your main combo extenders that you'll always be using. Um, now for his quirk one, is this uh, swordfish-like stab pierce thing, which is really interesting, it's a very unusual move. <laughs> so it it's long range, obviously you can see the sword of the swordfish reaches really far. And this is essentially what I use as somewhat of a projectile with Tamaki, because he doesn't have any traditional projectiles or anything to use when he's far away. So I tend to, when I'm around here and I don't want to go in with the tags, because that'll be quite slow at this range, or if I don't want to like commit to like running in and doing an attack. So it's almost, yeah, I use it as I would use a projectile, you know, just this long-ranged prod with the, the sword, which is it's a really good move, and it does a lot of damage, 3,500 damage on its own. Um, you can also hold it, and he'll go forward, and it reaches even longer, so if I'm like out here and I've realized, oh, it's probably not going to hit from there, I can hold it a bit longer, and he'll go in, so it, it works very similarly to a projectile, so if you're out here, what would you expect to hit? Obviously projectile, well this will hit as well, if I'm decently far away. There. Oh, no, 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 no. How about here? Yeah, that was even a bit under the distance. But yeah, and it works the same in the air. Um, I basically just use it as a projectile, not a combo extender, because as you can see, things scale quite highly. See, that did 7,174, whereas this part that I used after it, on its own, does only a bit under that on its own. So I don't use it to extend combos, but I do use it as a really good like um, way of uh, taming your opponent, like controlling them when they're far away, like they can't get away with doing anything, because you have this like almost projectile move. So yeah, that's basically what I use this for. And it's the same in the air. Okay, now for his tilt quirk one, is this kind of weaker version of his 
uh, plus ultra. It's this really damaging combo ender move that does what 4,500 basically damage. You can combo into it, and it has quite a few different properties. You saw one of them just then. If you don't grab the opponent um, on the beginning frames, like it does here, and then Baku goes like inside with Tamaki, and it does 4,000 damage there. Some t if you if they're not if they're not getting grabbed by that, so if you do it outside of them, they will just get hit by it like this. And you saw that when I comboed into it from here. Bakugo wasn't grabbed, he was just hit like a bunch of times by the the rolling shell itself. Which can be good in its own right, see, especially if you're near a corner or something and they get like bounced and rolled for ages. Um, obviously the move is unsafe on block, but it's hard to have it stay on block because you <laughs> keep rolling away. So I don't use it that much for pressure, even though it is pretty good, so you can get quite a few block attacks and then you just roll away, and then <laughs> they're probably not going to be able to punish it. Um, yeah, so it does a lot of damage, you can dash cancel after it if you catch someone. Uh, doing something, and if you catch them with it and you want to extend your combos. And as you see there, it's also really good if you're facing a wall like I am. And this only works with the captured versions when Baku goes inside. He'll launch the opponent out and they'll be in a wall splat, no matter how close to the wall you are. So I believe this even works if I'm on this side, because it carries them so far. So if you're facing a wall, you're practically guaranteed to get a wall splat. Which is really good. So yeah, that's that move in a nutshell. It's basically a smaller version of his plus ultra one, and it's really good for getting wall splats. Okay, and it behaves the same in the air on the ground, just letting you know. Now for his quirk two, it is this uppercut chicken claw or eagle flick where essentially the first hit he just like uppercuts you with his feet and then it's a two hitter so if you press it again then he will grab you and slam you into the ground and this is his uh, combo ender that you use most of the time because sometimes it's a bit unreliable hitting the shell move like it hits here but sometimes it completely misses depending on the combo say if I've done this beforehand um, here, let me show you an example of how it can miss. Like a one, two, three, into this. Sometimes it misses and then you don't get the proper animation and sometimes you can get punished for it. I do like, like to use it sometimes because even if it doesn't hit correctly and you end up just like running into the opponent and doing damage like this, it, like a lot of people don't know how to deal with it and they get hit by it or uh, have a lot of block uh, pressure done to them. And yeah, they just don't know how to deal with it. You try to punish it while you're still in there and you can't do that. But yeah, um, <laughs> back on his quirk 2, it's the combo ender that you want to be using most of the time because it does decent damage, is, decent damage and is a lot more reliable than the other combo ender. So if, when you're ready to end your combo, you usually cancel it after his armor attack, or his tilt attack as you could say, and cancel it into the two hits of it. You can also use it to extend combos by dash cancelling after the first hit. So if I do this, then it into the flick and I can dash cancel into a bit of an extended air combo if I like. Yeah. And that's basically this, you don't get combos after it, it's just a combo ender. It doesn't get wall splats, it might get the floor break, but that's about it. Good damage. And reliable. Okay, now for his tilt quirk 2, which is possibly my favorite move, is the tentacle grab. And as you saw there, it does tons of damage just on its own. And it can be dash cancelled afterwards to get even more damage. But Quick note on the, using it in a combo for uh, uh, after a dash cancel, if you are mid-screen or don't have a wall nearby, you can basically not get your combo afterwards. Like, I've tried all different timings of attacks after the dash cancel, of doing it late, doing it early, doing the attack late, doing the attack early, and, but nothing works. Like, unless you just are desperate and you want to get a swordfish, you can do that, 
that's about it. And you do get a wolf spot for that, but it's not completely reliable. But as you can see here, using it does a lot of damage, no matter what you do afterwards. But um, <coughs> that aside, what I was trying to get to there is that you want to be using this when you know you're facing, or at least somewhat close to a wall, because then it will slow your opponents um, like flying away from you so that you can catch them with a the dash cancel attack. Oh, there's some spoilers for the high damage combos that he can do, but we'll get to those later, don't worry. So, aside from being really good uh, combo extender, you can cancel it after his armor attack, and then you've done 6,600 damage just on its own. Oops. And you can also use it after he does a slam to go into his level 1, and that is decently consistent at hitting, and does really good damage. Really, really good damage. 15,000 for a plus ultra attack and no dash cancels, that's pretty good. Okay, and this property can- this, um, this move cannot be used in the air, he doesn't have the tentacle grab in the air, but on the ground, if you hold it, it quickly becomes a red attack, and no one re reacts to this. A lot of people- I haven't actually seen many people using Tamaki online, but a lot of people aren't ready that it can become a red attack, because it's only red for like a f like quarter second while he grabs you with it, so a lot of people don't react and sidestep this. And you end up getting your full damage combo after it if you do it. And a lot of the time I actually do this on block as well, because it's quite fast, and it's similar to the startup of his third hit. So see here, if I do three hits, that looks the same. Um, let me break his guard real quick. Oh wait, no. Just stop guarding so you can hit it. Um, if I do, after the second hit, I cancel into the Hell Tilt Quirk 2, and then I can get a combo after it. It does a lot of damage. Wait, that wasn't even optimal. If I do two hits, and then all of a sudden the red attack, and then they're not ready for that. That was only one dash cancel off of a red attack, a really good red attack, and you get 10,500 damage. Which is pretty amazing. So, this move is definitely a key piece of his arsenal. Okay, now that we've gotten to all of his buttons, oh, something else to mention is that, as you may have seen, his jumps are extremely high. Like, look how high he jumps, and they're very floaty because thanks to the wings. So, you can jump like so far over your opponent. Tamaki's truly an angel. So, he jumps really high, really far and he's in the air for a long time, like he is a long hang time, but just like other characters he can do two jumps, so he can almost jump from one end to the stage with the two jumps, but he also has a third jump, so he can do one, two, three, and he's been in, in the air that whole time. So if you're against an opponent like um, uh, maybe Rapa or someone that doesn't really like to be staying in the air for too long, because if his best things aren't in the air, then <laughs> this, like, amazing, you're practically flying. It's better than Nezure's float, because she just, like, stands there and floating. Tamaki can actually, like, control where he goes, so you can... It's really good for being able to control your trajectory, because a lot of people, when they, like, dash in, you know, they don't have much they can do, they can jump back and forward once or twice, but Tamaki has really good air movement. See, look at that. <laughs> so I can jump, dash in, jump sideways, this... Oh, then I want to go this way, actually. So that's a total of four actions. Wait, no, five. So one, two, three, four, five actions he can do in the air just to maneuver and place himself. So that's something you really want to be using. Like, your opponent's not going to be ready if you jump or, like, dash at them or do something and, like, they think you're going to land and try and punish you for not doing anything. You just, like, jump around a few times and then start his combos from the air. <laughs> wasn't optimal at all, but you see my point, he's really good at maneuvering in the air. Especially with um, the, the swordfish move of his as well. So if he jumps away or something and you think they think you're running away, and then you pierce them with the swordfish, he has a lot of great uh, spacing with this. With his jumps. I never, I never thought someone's jump would be overpowered, but Tommy Hughes definitely is. Um, anyways, now that we've covered all of his buttons and special abilities, let's get into his combos.
So you may have seen some of the combos, or you will have, because if you watch the video, but his bread and butter is essentially three hits into his armor move and into his tentacles, and then after that, you dash cancel into three hits, into armor move, into quirk two, the two hits. And that does 11,500 damage practically. So that's three hits. Oops. Oh, also, that's something that can happen a lot. If you cancel the armor um, attack too early after the third hit, it can like just cause the opponent to just fall down for some reason, which is something you want to avoid, obviously. But yeah, that's just a weird, interesting glitch that happens with some sometimes. So, yeah, Tamaki can get an easy 11,500 damage combo for one dash cancel. It really says something about how good he is at using combos and spacing and stuff. And, yeah, so he, he'll obviously get the most damage when he's on the ground, because that's where he has this tentacle attack, which does a lot of damage on its own. So, I'll just redo the combo since it's so amazing. So it's three hits. And also, if you're facing the wall, you can actually let the, the fourth hit of the armor attack hit. So I go one, two, three, four, and then if I'm facing straight at the wall like I am here, you can actually grab him for even more damage. And <laughs> he gets 12,500 damage practically for one dash cancel. It's pretty amazing. Tamaki is a really badass combo heavy character. Uh, yeah, which really, I think the fans deserve, you know, after his awesome episode in Season 3, I mean Season 4, his fights against the Overhaul Goons, he's, people can finally appreciate his badassery by actually using him. But yeah, uh, <clears throat> still covering combos. Uh, if you have the opponent, if they are blocking something you do, you can get basically the same combo after the red tentacles. You do one, two, three, into one, two, three of the armor move, and then cancel into this. And that also on its own does like 10,500 damage, which is amazing for getting off of a mix up of a fast, great unblockable move. So, yeah, make sure you're using that, because that's pretty overpowered, I think. Um, his combos can be extended even more, because if you realize. I didn't get a Meteor Blow in that amazing 10, 000, 11,000 combo that I did. I didn't get a Meteor Blow, so I can extend it a bit more if I want. So I can do another dash cancel. I do one, two, three, into these, and I dash cancel up to here. And then that will be a Meteor Blow there, so you want to make sure you don't do the armor move there. So I have to do one, two, three. Oh, oops. Oops, I messed that up. But I still did a lot of damage with me messing it up. Okay, wait, what if I simplify it to go one, two, three? Dash cancel, one, two, Three. There we go. 12,600 damage for two dash cancels in a single combo. No plus ultras, no sidekick assists or anything. It's just That's just Tamaki's straight damage. It's really amazing. And if I let the fourth hit of the armor move hit, like say if I was facing a wall, it does even more. Oh my goodness. 13.6 thousand damage. 13,600 damage for two dash cancels. No assists. That's practically half of your enemy's life just because you managed to get a combo. So, <laughs> yeah, Tamaki is definitely an amazing brawler, up close, intense combo character. <laughs> it's, oh my god, that's amazing. I didn't even realize he had that much damage.
let's move on. I'll, I'll be talking about that all day. <laughs> um, these plus ultra combos. I mean, if you can get 16,000, I don't see why you'd do it. But obviously you do, because they're flashy. So the most um, guaranteed way is to do it after the armor move. But if you're close to a wall, you can also get it. You can include an octopus attack in there before. So that'll do a, about 12,000 damage. But if you include an octopus, or a tentacle attack, I mean. Um, it will do a bit more, obviously. There we go. That's just a bit less uh, reliable, but it does a lot more damage if you're willing to risk it. So, basically 15,000 damage for 1 plus ultra meter, which is by no means bad. It's just that Tamaki is such a combo beast on his own. Like, why would you choose to not do this? Like, I get that plus ultras are flashy, but is this not more flashy? <laughs> For only two dash cancels and you're getting 12, 13,000 damage. Anyways, and it's plus ultra 2, uh, basically the same way, except you can't do it off of the tentacles, I don't think. I'll try now. It might work here because I'm right against a wall, but I, generally I don't think it does. So obviously this plus ultra 2 works the same as all others do, it's a large chunk of damage that the enemy can't avoid if you hit them with it, so it's good at just getting uh, certain damage for comebacks or just making sure you win the round, so obviously it's good for that, but I definitely prefer to go for Tamaki's pulses and combos whenever I can. Getting 13.6 thousand damage just for two dash cancels and doing an awesome flashy combo is a lot cooler, I think. But that said, I think that's basically all I have to say about Tamaki. He's a really. I think the main thing about him is he's just fun. I don't know if I would say he's overpowered or top tier. He's just really fun because of all of his amazing combo potential. He has good movement in the air, as you can, as I've been showing with his three jumps. Oh yeah, including side steps as well. Oh yeah, wait, I guess you can do one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, 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 one. Uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't even know we could do that. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven if you could, one. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He do seven attacks in the air before he touches the ground. That is pretty amazing. <laughs> so yeah, overall, recapping everything that I've said, Tamaki's best wants to be up close, using his amazing combos, or uh, mixing up with his <laughs> tentacle, unblockable tentacle, into combos, and doing lots and lots of damage up close. But when he's further away, he can obviously get in with his amazing movement that is enabled by his uh, OP jumping, I guess. He's really great jumping. And also his swordfish attack is, I like to use as somewhat of a projectile for him. So if I'm out here and I don't want to go all out and just, like run in and attack, I can just, you know, poke him with this and get a little bit of a... And if I know that it's going to hit and I can dash cancel, and get a combo afterwards, even though it does a bit, a bit less damage than things usually. But yeah, that's basically Tamaki. Make sure you use his amazing red attack as well, I forgot to mention that again. Yeah, so he's good at controlling space with this. He wants to be up close, not further than jumping distance. So around here, because then his swordfish can hit, then he's in... Uh, danger range of his red attack. And everyone has to be scared of that. 
and also just they have to be scared if, if you ever throw out his red tentacles just in the neutral is something really scary that you can do. And obviously they have to be scared a bit on block whenever you're doing anything because you can just do that or you can mix them up by doing this. And there's just a lot of ways that he can, he wants to be up close doing his really amazing combo stuff that his moveset really enables him to do. So, essentially, that's Tamaji Tamaki Amajiki, guys. I hope you guys enjoy. Um, I really enjoy playing with him, just because of his amazing combos. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.